Good uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I wrote about flying overloaded, and uh, Yvonne Quick is going to have some. I sold out. Uh, I brought it, uh, about 100 books up with me, and, and they've all sold in the last uh, couple days. Uh, I'd like to tell you a story about falling in the water. And uh, I think everybody that's flown on floats has probably uh, fallen in, in a lake at one time or another. Um, I left here with a beaver. Uh, it was a brand new beaver that uh, PWA sent up to me. It was, uh, registration was JXO. And Pat Carey and Fort Smith got JXP. And mine got here with just fairy time in it, and uh, it had 70 hours since brand new. So I strapped the canoe on the side, and uh, uh, I was a little worried about uh, tying canoes on, and, and I hadn't a lot of experience with external loads. And uh, I had a, a friend of my dad who was a first generation bush pilot in the Hamilton family, and my son is uh, still flying up in the yard, he's running a fishing lodge right now out of Cambridge Bay. Uh, anyway, uh, this uh, George Phillips was flying for Ontario Central Airways out of uh, Algonquin Park, Park, north of between Toronto and North Bay. And he was flying out of the, their base was a Sandy Lake. And he took off with the canoe, and in the old days, we, we had all we had was hemp ropes. And uh, he used to always have the canoe on the side, and he, he took off, and uh, the canoe shifted ahead and hit the prop. And the engine came off. <laughs> and uh, if you ever flown a, a paper airplane without a paper clip in the nose or no weight in the nose, it, it just won't fly. And uh, without the weight of the engine, he went into the trees and killed himself. So after that, I uh, made sure that my canoes were tied on pretty good. And I used to put two ropes front and two back, and then another one in uh, side to make sure it couldn't move ahead. And uh, then I put rope, rope tighteners on it. And in those days, we didn't have these hurt straps that we have now. And uh, so anyway, I take off for the east arm, and it's in the spring of the year with a, two prospectors and their, all their gear. Of course, we weren't overloaded. All we had was their uh, all their food, all their camping gear, the canoe on the side, and uh, their picks and shovels and dynamite and caps, which you're not supposed to carry in the same load together, but every pilot does because they're not, the prospector isn't going to pay for two trips. So anyway, way we merrily go, and uh, we get over and there's still ice in the east arm, and, and they tell me where uh, they want me to land. And uh, so between the ice and the shore, there's lots of room to land. And, and so I uh, cruise in there and uh, taxi up on a, on a shelf about uh, 150 feet from shore. And this nice flat rock shelf, and it's a little bit slimy. And, and uh, so I run it up pretty solid. And then I untie the canoe, and the prospectors paddle ashore with their groceries and so on. And uh, when I taxied up there, the uh, like I said, it wasn't overloaded, uh, but uh, the rear of the floats were underwater. Uh, I don't know why that was, uh, because. Uh, Maybe it was because it was uh, I had too much load in the back or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, I uh, got it up pretty solid on this shelf, and then um, after they got everything on shore, uh, I t 
takes the paddle and I get an inside between the, the cowling and I shove on the rock. To, well, actually, uh, I forgot this a little bit. What, we got it partly unloaded and it floated off. So I get in and start the engine and I put it back up on the shelf again. And uh, so after they got the rest of the load, it was stuck pretty solid. So I get in there and I shove this with the paddle, and the paddle slipped on the slimy rocks, and I just followed right in. <laughs> and, uh, so I could have stood up and, and walked ashore, but the wind is blowing uh, the airplane back towards the ice. So um, I strike off swimming for it. Well, I would have never made it. I'd have died, and, and it was really cold with the ice behind me, and I didn't want the airplane to go back and damage the rear of the floats going into the um, the ice, and the wind was really howling pretty good. So uh, anyway, I finally come to my senses, and I um, wade ashore, and I get the canoe, and uh, I was a pretty good canoeist, and I go paddling back to the airplane, tie the canoe to the side of the float, or just uh, leaving it in the water, and I taxi back to shore. And uh, then I give the canoe a scoop to shore, and uh, the way I go, and, and anyway, it took off, and I was just about, uh, was just shaking, I, I'm so cold, and I really wanted a cigarette, really bad, but I, <laughs> Everything was wet, <laughs> including my billfold and pilot license and everything else. And so anyway, uh, I tried to dry out uh, the cigarettes on, on the, the heater, the heat duct coming up right between the seats. And uh, I never did get a cigarette until I got back to Yellowknife. Uh, anyhow, uh, I shouldn't have smoked anyway, I guess. <laughs> uh, Anyway, I get back in Yellowknife, and this new beaver came up from um, uh, the factory in, in uh, Downsview in, in Toronto with these new nylon ropes, and they were white ropes, and they were quite light, and um, they disappeared for some reason out of my airplane, and so I figured that the otter pilots had lifted them, and. Uh, so I go straight to the, uh, first I went home and I had a shower and I get all dressed up in my gray flannels and a, a shirt and uh, come back and uh, I, the otter was pulled up over here at the PWA dock, nosed into the dock so they could uh, do some maintenance on the um, uh, engine, and uh, so I go merrily walking out onto the, the float, and there's nothing to, to grab on, on the otter, there's just the, the, the cowling, and when you get a little further back near the front door, there's a step where you can get up onto the, uh, into the cockpit. So anyway, I, I uh, lose my balance when I step on there, and I, I practically walking right on the side of the float when I fell in <laughs> with all these nice clothes on. <laughs> and, uh, so I was a little embarrassed, and there was a bunch of Indians sitting in front of the Rex Cafe, which was across the um, channel. Uh, it's not there anymore. Uh, Anyway, I get to the dock and I crawl into the water and, and uh, Harry Sorensen uh, had come up and he flew for uh, Bob Ingalls for, for years and years. Flew their DC-3 and, and Hercules and everything. Uh, anyway, he's just bent right over. He, he's just uh, <laughs> dying. He's, 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 he found this really hilarious. I didn't find it the least bit funny at all, falling in twice in the same day. And uh, uh, 
So anyway, and, and then I look over at these Indians, and they're all laughing too. <laughs> Well, that's the end of that story. I could tell you a hundred others, and most of them are in my book. Uh, so, uh, that's Bye. pretty well it. Uh, <laughs>